Hi guys, this is Adam Jones with London Perch Finder. Hope you're well. Um, thanks very much for tuning in to another YouTube video. Um, sorry it's been a while. I have decided to make a kind of amalgamation video of uh, some of the footage that I picked up from my kind of early start to the perch season. Um, and I've had loads of questions, which is amazing, about various bits and bobs. Uh, so in today's video, I'm going to cover some rod types for those that are just coming to perch fishing, some rig types to get you going, um, some baits obviously to go with, and then hopefully a few clips of me catching some decent fish, uh, showing you guys kind of what I'm doing, how I'm retrieving that type of stuff. Obviously, there's loads of videos on my channel with all of that information as well, but as it's the start of the perch season, I thought I would give you guys um, a nice kind of overview refresher of some of the bits and bobs to look at. So as always, thanks so much for coming to my channel. I really appreciate all the support, all the likes, subscribes, comments. Um, it's been really humbling that you guys are enjoying watching these videos half as much as I'm enjoying making them. Um, and welcome to my new garden. Um, we've moved house recently, obviously, with coronavirus just outside of London. And as you can see, I have my own little trout stream um, with a couple of really nice trout under the bridge. I might put a couple of clips of that in the video as well. Um, but like I said, if this is the first time that you've come to my channel, thanks so much for coming. If it's the first time that you're looking at getting into perch fishing, well done, you've nailed it, it's absolutely awesome. Uh, I know the carp season's finished and guys are looking at things to do. This is perfect, small, short sessions, three, four hour sessions in the evenings and the mornings. Uh, get yourself out on the bank, get yourself active, catching some amazing fish and doing something slightly different. Um, and uh, yeah, let's get stuck into the video. Like I said, we're gonna go through some rigs, we're gonna go through some rod types, and then hopefully, if you stick around, uh, I will uh, I'll put some clips up as well of catching some fish. The perch season started really well for me so far. Um, I think I'm up to eight threes now, um, and quite a few twos. Fishing very, very different areas to where I'm used to, based on the fact that my logic is that I know where they're gonna be later on in the year from the, the kind of recon that I did last year, and I'm trying to build up a kind of cache of new spots outside of that. Um, so it's not been easy fishing, but it's been really, really worthwhile, and uh, I'm excited to kind of share a few of those catches with you later on. Um, so let's get stuck in, and let's have a look at a couple of the simple rigs that I think you need uh, before you start your perch season. Hey guys, right, I've uh, obviously zoomed in a little bit and I'm going to go through some of the rigs. Um, I'm not going to go into kind of hyper detail with these rigs. I can do, um, if you guys want to see kind of setting up videos and things like that, please let me know. I'm more than happy to do it. Uh, what I'm going to do is just go through very briefly my thinking on all of these different types of rigs, uh, my go-tos um, and obviously reasons that I would fish one over the other in certain scenarios. There are loads of reasons why you would fish one or the other and people have different uh, views on this so you know do what feels right for you and um, you know my motto when it comes to to kind of perch fishing is doing things you know as simple as you possibly can to get those results and that's the way that I'm going to try and convey this to you guys now so hopefully this is useful first one for me um, this time of year especially uh, with some weeds still knocking around um, is the Cheb rig now I think the Cheb rig is a fantastically versatile way of fishing all sorts of different baits um, it's essentially a bull weight a chabrasca weight which has got a clip inside it you can clip that onto a, a hook and the beauty of that is that the hook then articulates on that metal um, pin inside the the weight so as that weight sits on the bottom with the buoyancy of you know the likes of the elaztec z-man baits that is then going to start to float up on the bottom and kind of wobble with a, a lovely kind of free action with a kind of crayfish posture or a fish kind of bugging around on the bottom trying to eat and obviously that presentation is is phenomenal and you do get a lot of bites the beauty of the cheb rig is you can fish this as a as a jig as well so you could you know on any given day if you suddenly see that they're chasing um kind of bait fish you could slap a, a minnows on there and pull it through nice and easy because it's connected like a jig head the weight is connected to the hook um, and allows you to kind of swim that through exactly the way pretty much as you would a jig head with a more erratic action because obviously you've got some articulation between the hook and the weight. The other positive for me is you're in direct contact with the hook. So the minute that um, the bait is taken by the fish, the weight moves, and as soon as the weight moves, you're definitely going to feel that translation through the rod. Um, it allows you to set the hook faster and know that you're in contact with the fish. You can fish it obviously right the way through the weight ranges and you get that lovely articulation. The downside to that is obviously when you get into the heavier weights, the fish might feel the weight of the hook 
and the weight uh, when they take the bait. So that's when I would start looking at Texas weight um, options. So with Texas weights, you've got you know bullet weights essentially. Um, I've got a couple here from from Todd Bermana. Uh, these are tungsten Texas weights. Uh, so you fish that with exactly the same style hook as you would for your Cheb rig. So I use a 1.0 Gamma Katsu for most of the work that I do over the winter for Big Perch. Um, and a, a glass bead if you want to. You don't have to fish it with a bead, mm -hmm. but again, that's just for some extra kind of noise um, and vibration under the water. The beauty of a Texas weight is you've got a free running piece of line connected to your hook. So when the fish takes the bait, there is an amount of movement that is free from the weight. The upside to that is obviously they're not going to feel it. So those finicky biting fish, um, you know, you've got a positive there. Downside to that is you might not feel the bite straight away. The perch could inhale, obviously, the hook and the bait, especially on things like Carolina rig setups. I'm not going to go into those at the moment, but, it's, you know, essentially a similar concept, but with a longer leader at the end of the weight. Um, you've got a chance that that fish could then deep hook itself. So when I'm fishing more finesse, you know, two, three, five gram, I tend to go with a Cheb. Um, and then when I go into the heavier weights, um, I, I will kind of move towards Texas weights just to allow that free running nature of the hook and the bait. But you do have to be cognizant of that because you can deep hook fish. Um, on the Cheb side, you can get kind of similar versions of a, of a Cheb. So these are the Snake Locks Finesse um, from TT Lures, work really nicely with Z-Man baits. Um, these are essentially Cheb um, setups with a kind of connected hook to a weight that can articulate. Um, and then if I look at the kind of more standardized um, options for Ned fishing, so this is just a, a weedless EWG uh, lifted jigs weedless Ned head. These are fantastic. Um, I also fish the skirted um, Ned heads from Z-Man. I leave these metal keepers on now. I've picked up quite a lot of confidence leaving them on. So these fish quite weedless, not really weedless, um, but quite weedless. And uh, on the bigger side of the jigs, I'll fish quite heavy um, kind of skirted rigs when I'm in, say, the Thames, for example, and it's pushing through. Um, I'll fish a rig like this. I'll take a couple of the strands of the keeper off, and uh, this works really nicely as a kind of weedless uh, punching jig. So on top of that, we've got our standard neds, um, which aren't weedless, just standard kind of mushroom jig heads from Z-Man. And uh, as you guys know, I love these finesse bullets um, from Z-Man as well. These are just kind of weedless jig heads that sit really nicely on the bottom. Um, will float up in the lighter weights, but in the heavier weights they kind of sit and the crayfish imitations sit up at kind of 45 degrees and are another really nice option. So if I was gonna start off my um, fishing for this year and I didn't have any of these things, I'd be looking at kind of three and five gram Ned heads for you know a few months down the line when the weed kind of starts to disappear, but I'd definitely be getting myself some three, five, and seven gram Cheb weights, some 1.0 Gamma Katsus or equivalent hooks, um, some varying sizes, because you can fish smaller baits on the same Cheb rig weight, which is a beauty as well. Um, I get myself some probably three, seven, and maybe 10 gram um, Texas weights, and obviously the fluorocarbon and bits of bobs that go with that. Right, so now we've looked at rigs, um, we're just gonna have a quick look at a couple of the rod options um, that I've got. Uh, and for the, for the guys that are kind of looking to get into this, the types of rods that I think you should be looking at, um, and then obviously what I use on a day-to-day -day basis. So if I kind of look at my go-to um, kind of option for perch fishing, for me it's a BFS rod, BFS being bait finesse system or style or whatever you wanna, however you wanna say it. Um, which is light baits on bait casters. This is an older Baron BFS XG that I've used for the last couple of years. Um, and I've got it strapped on to one of my major craft. This is actually a prototype uh, major craft rod that I'm testing at the moment. Um, but a lot of them are pretty similar in terms of what I'm looking for them, a fast action, medium fast action, as with the BFS stuff, kind of 0 0.7 to seven, uh, two to 10, three and a half to 14 for the kind of more power finesse um, options. Um, kind of strapped up with some some nice kind of light PE braid. So 0 0.6 is my kind of go-to PE on the braid um, with fluorocarbon leaders. As you can probably see, it kind of goes from the bait, which is here to here. So maybe two and a half, three foot of leader. Um, and that's my go-to. That's my kind of BFS go-to for perch, throwing baits from kind of one gram all the way up to my average is probably seven 
um, to 10 grams depending on rivers that I'm fishing. Uh, usually with say a three gram Ned head and a Z-Man plastic, which means you're gonna be getting up into the six, seven gram range anyway. Um, for those that don't um, have a BFS rod, don't wanna splash out on a BFS rod, fixed spool options are a really nice way to get into this and everything that I cover and have done before and will do in the future can be achieved on a fixed spool rod as well. Um, this is a major craft fine tail. This is the first um, spinning rod that I bought when I got into perch fishing. Um, properly, it's a two to 10 gram, fast action. Uh, it's actually a trout spinning rod. I just really like the way that it looked, but it's got a nice bit of backbone in the middle, lovely sensitive tip. Um, and I paired that up with a, a 500 size uh, Nasky from Shimano. Uh, you could pair that up with any, you know, 1500, 1000, 2500 size reel, just to balance that rod out. But again, you're looking at the one to seven, you know, 0 0.7 to seven, two to 10 gram, that type of thing. There are loads of wicked options out there in all different price ranges, um, but that's what you're looking for in your rod option. Um, and then just a, you know, a kind of piece of information that I'm messing around with and there'll be a video on soon. Uh, I've just got myself a Revo EXD from um, Abu Garcia. Thinking behind this is I want something that I can throw some slightly heavier baits for pike um, and also then in the same session potentially switch out to a more finesse presentation. So the Revo EXD comes with two spools, a finesse spool and a, and a less finesse spool. Um, so that's part of my testing as well. There will be a video coming soon. So that's my thinking on the rods. Hope it all makes sense. And uh, what we're gonna do now is have a little look at the baits and then let's get stuck in to some perch. Right, so let's quickly touch on a few of my kind of go-to lures that I've got kind of constantly in my vest, uh, ready to go when I'm out on the bank. These lures can all be fished with the Ched rig, the Texas rig, the Ned rig, uh, weedless variants of those that can be fished on the back of skirted rigs, all of the stuff that we touched on um, earlier on in the video. So let's just have a quick look at um, a few of my kind of go-tos. Um, so we've got finesse worms here. Again, all, the thing I love about the Z-Man baits is um, the durability and the buoyancy are the big things for me. These things are so elastic that you can you know, just stretch and stretch and stretch. You can have pike after pike, perch after perch. As long as you don't stick it in a shopping trolley, likelihood is the bait is going to last. Uh, sorry, we've got a spit flying going over there. That, that's wicked. Something you don't see every day. Um, yes, so anyway, back to, back to baits. Um, so we've got the finesse worms, really nice option. You can fish them straight up on a chev. You can fish them wacky, you can fish them drop shot. There's all different kind of variants of these. Um, ways that you can fish them, sorry. So finesse worms, we've got the finesse TRDs, standard, everybody knows pretty much what they are. Um, again, just a stick bait, don't look like much, but they're absolute killers. Um, if you need something with a little bit more profile, I always carry some punch crawls in the bag. These are a bigger crayfish imitation bait. Sometimes I cut them down and just, I like the kind of the fact they've got slightly bigger claws, um, just something else that the fish may or may, or may not have seen. Um, and then the standards for me are the uh, TRD Bugs and the TRD Ticklers. Now, you've also got all of your minnow baits, so your diesel minnows, your minnows, um, your finesse shads, those types of things. But for me, the killers at the moment and through the winter will be TRD Bugs, the TRD Ticklers in various colors. Um, obviously, we all know that I love a June bug, um, but also the finesse TRDs. So that's from the Z-Man range. Obviously, I've been using Z-Man for years. Um, and you know, swear by kind of the the merits of Elastec, the buoyancy, like I said, the durability. There are loads of options out there. Um, the key for me is to single out those bigger fish. Is to be fishing those Chebs, those Texas rigs, those Ned rigs when the weed gets down. The weedless options of Cheb and, and Texas, but also the weedless Neds, the skirted jigs, along the bottom, nice and slow, as you've seen in my videos, uh, just to start to single out those bigger, fatter crayfish munching, lazier fish. Um, it works for me. You, you are fishing for less bites, but generally those bites are from bigger fish. So hopefully that's helped. If you've got any questions, like I've always said, please just send me a comment, send me a message on Instagram at London Perch Finder, um, and I'll get back to you uh, hopefully as soon as possible. If you don't hear back from me straight away, please just send me a quick reminder because I do get a lot of questions and they do get bumped down my inbox. So hope that's helped, um, and I hope you enjoy the perch that you're about to see and uh, I'll speak to you guys very soon.
this we've got a bike a bit further out there then as soon as you reach the shelf it's just pretty much unfishable so In the net. Get in. It's not humongous, but that's a good fish. I like that. Keep your head up. Oh, that's a big chub. That's a donkey chub. Big chub, get in. Wow, that's big. That's a good one. Look at the size on that. Some perch. Could be two pounds. Right, beautiful. Get this one unhooked, get a photo, and get going again. All right, let's go again. So, I've not done a lot of talking on this video. <laughs> so, uh, that fish was caught, like I said, probably on the uh, walk over here on a skirted tungsten jig quite a heavy weed keeper which I've always found oh there you go that's a good one I've always found that I lose a bit of confidence with as you can see these fish definitely get hooked come on in you come in you come yes oh that's a bigger fish that's that one is uh, a much better fish. That's knocking on the door of three pounds. Jesus, that's a, that's a chunk. Right, get this unhooked so we can get another. See if we can go three casts for three. Then I'm going to get some photos. And then we'll get these guys back. I was not expecting that. That is a great fish. So like I was saying, all I'm doing is just bouncing this across the bottom. The hook hold on that fish was incredible. Oh, that's another one. Three for three, get in. Three for three, that is, that's crazy. Look at that. All right, there's the big girl, nice and strong. Ready to go, my net 
stuck itself to the. Uh... There she goes. There she goes. Perfect. Let's go find another. Brett's just had, had this lump, long, soon to be very fat fish. If I can uh, have my first, my fourth, sorry, three pounder of the week. Let's just get that back on there. We can. Three pound. Oh, it's impossible. Pick it up. Three pound. Three ounces. Full three of the week. Different spot, work hard, and rewards come. Absolutely landed with that. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks very much, uh, as always, for coming to my channel. The guys that have supported me the whole way through um, and that are enjoying these videos, uh, like I said, I am genuinely humbled by it um, and really um, you know, pleased that you guys are enjoying and taking things from it. Um, you know, I'm just out here making videos and just kind of having a good time and doing what I do and just fishing. So thanks so much. Um, if you haven't already, please, please subscribe to the channel. There are more videos to come. And if you haven't seen them, there are more videos in my kind of back catalogue. Um, I hope this helps you set up for the perch season and start you off in the right direction. Um, and best of luck for the next kind of four or five months. Um, if you've got any questions, any kind of queries on any of the gear that I use um, or any of the techniques that I've spoken about in my previous videos or this video, then please just drop me a message. But like I said, thanks so much. I will speak to you guys very, very soon and tight lines until we speak again.